Good morning, everyone. I'm Davide Colucci, and today I'm going to show you the first demonstration of an open, optically pumped nano ridge laser, epitaxially grown on silicon. I guess you all know that a laser source on silicon is one of the last missing pieces for the silicon photonics platform, and probably the most important one. The monolithic integration of direct band gap materials in particular, is a desirable approach to obtain such a source because it will grant higher scalability and reduce cost with respect to other integration methods. The main challenges, however, are the lattice mismatch between silicon and a 3.5 material, which introduce defects in the laser, and the difference in thermal expansion coefficient, which could lead to bowing of the wafer. In this presentation, I will introduce you to a novel solution to tackle these problems called nanoridge engineering. These nanoridges can be described as 3-5 waveguides, epitaxially grown in narrow openings, called it trenches, patterned on a silicon oxide layer. However, there is actually much more behind nanoridge engineering. First of all, by growing the 3.5 only in these selected areas, you have the advantage of growing the material only where it's needed, with clear benefits both in terms of integration with other components and costs. At the same time, since you don't need to grow thick layers of 3.5, you also avoid bowing. The selective area growth per se doesn't stop the creation of misfit defects due to the lattice mismatch. It's for this reason that narrow trenches are used. By choosing a high aspect ratio, all the threading dislocations are pinned on the trench walls, effectively trapping the defects. Finally, by adjusting the growth condition, the volume and the shape of the 3-5 material growing out of the trench can be controlled. In this way, the volume is not limited by the trench opening, and nano ridges with dimension of several hundreds of nanometers can be grown. All these three aspects together contribute to the nanoridge approach. The novelty and the potential of this approach comes from the fact that you strongly separate the region where the defects are formed from the actual device region. The first device to prove the potential of such an approach was based on a fully relaxed gallium arsenide nanoridge. Here, three strained ingas quantum wells with 20% indium composition as use, are used as gain material, while a lattice match inga passivation layer was used to reduce surface recombination. To create a DFP laser, a grating was etched on top of the nano ridge. The final device, measured in a PL setup under pulse excitation, shown single mode operation at 1020 nanometer and a threshold of 34 kilowatt per centimeter square. Even if this was already an extremely encouraging result, to address the telecommunication space, at least emission in the open is required. In order to do so, we needed to move from gallium arsenide ridges to ingas nano ridges with 25% indium. In this way, ingas quantum wells with 45% indium can be grown without suffering from strain relaxation. This, together with a 72% indium in the ingap passivation layer, allowed to obtain nano ridges showing strong PL around 1300 nanometer at room temperature. Here, you can see another benefits from this approach. In fact, you're not limited to a specific binary substrate to grow your quantum wells, but you can actually start from a fully relaxed ternary compound. This is shown in this reciprocal space map, where you can get useful information about the lattice constant of the nanoridge and substrate. This on the top in particular is the silicon peak, while this one is coming from the ingas nanoridge. Since these two peaks don't share the same value on, e on neither of the two axes, we can say that the ingas nano ridge are fully relaxed, while the vertical alignment between the ingas nano ridge and the ingas quantum wells 
actually is a proof that the wells are under strain. To prove the quality of these ingas and ridges, let me show you some cross sections. First of all, from this cross sam, you can notice that these nano ridges are quite uniform, both in shape and dimension. In this stem image, instead, where the brightness is proportional to the atomic number, you can clearly see the separation between the quantum wells, the nano ridge, and the ingap passivation layer. As regards the defects, which in these dark field images are represented by these bright lines, you can clearly see that also in this material system, they are nicely trapped inside the trenches. In the quantum wells, instead, as you can see from this two beam bright field image, no defects are visible. This is even more clear if you look at the lamella cut along the nano ridge. You can clearly see that the device region is free from any line defects. Only planar defects could actually come out the trenches. However, if they reach the top and the sides of the nano ridge, they do not generate partial dislocation and therefore we expect them not to be detrimental to the quality of the gain material. Given that we had a high crystal quality nano ridge to start with, the next step was to introduce the optical feedback to obtain a laser in the O-band. In order to do so, I've used a gold metal grating on top of the Ingas nano ridge with a similar design to the one shown by Yuting Shi on gallium arsenide based nano ridges. The peculiarity of this kind of grating is that you don't need a lambda over four teeth to select one of the two lasing modes of the DFP laser, but the selection is actually given by the losses. Indeed, if you look at the electric field profile coming from the two resonant modes, here shown with a cut along the ridge, and a cross section in the position of high electric field, you can clearly see that these two modes have different overlap with the metal grating on top, resulting in different losses and ultimately lacing from the, from the mode with lower ones. Obviously, it was not just a transfer of designs from one type of nano ridge to the other. I had to run FTDD simulation to get the correct grating pitch to position the resonant modes to the new gain spectrum. And I did this considering any change in the nano ridge dimension, which could result in a different effective refractive index and therefore wavelength of emission of the lasing mode. In the end, as you can see from this plot, a grating pitch between 190 nanometer and 210 nanometer allowed to place the lasing modes in the O band. I also needed to optimize the metal grating from a fabrication point of view. In principle, it was a simple lift off. The beam resist was firstly spin coated, then patterned and developed. Two thin film of metal were then deposited through evaporation. Five nanometer of titanium to increase the addition and 40 nanometer of gold for the actual grating. The remaining resist was then removed, leaving only the metal grating on top of the nano ridge. The liftoff per se was not complex, but required a lot of tuning due to the strong morphology of the nano ridge sample. In addition to that, metal stripes were also placed on the nano ridge surrounding the one with the grating. The scope in this case was to get rid of any unwanted background PL and then collect only the one coming from the grating. As regards the actual laser performance, they were tested in a micro PL setup at room temperature and under a pulse excitation at 532 nanometer. On the right plot here, you can see the PL spectra for different pump intensities. As you can see, for a lower pump intensity, you have a broad PL, while at higher pump intensity, a sharp peak appears around 1300 nanometer. This change from the spontaneous to a stimulated emission is even more clear when you integrate the PL around this peak and plot it, plot it as a function of the pulse pump intensity. This is shown in these two light in, light out curves. 
Especially in the logarithmic scale, you can see a sudden change in the emission regime, typical from a laser. And from that, you can also extrapolate a threshold pump intensity of 8 kilowatt per centimeter square, volume, value that is actually close to the one obtained on gallium arsenide nanoridges with metal grating. To conclude, we can say that we have demonstrated the first open laser based on Inga's nanoridge with a threshold pump intensity comparable to the one obtained with gallium arsenide ridges. This proves, proves that the nanoridge engineering can produce high crystal quality material, also with a ternary nanoridge. Such an emission wavelength is also an important step forward in integration with silicon waveguides, which can be now also evanescently coupled to the ridge. In the future, obviously, we want to realize an electrically pumped laser. For this reason, it is mandatory to develop doped ingas layers to have proper carrier injection. At the same time, both the use of this metal grating and the use of plugs will be explored. In addition to that, IMEC is already developing a content process flow on 300 mm silicon wafer, which is already showing promising result. In particular, the demonstration of a detector at 1020 nanometer using gallium arsenide nanoridges and contact plugs by Cenk Ozdemir indicates that we are on the right track towards the electrical injection. Finally, I would like to thank all the people involved with the nanoridge project and also the Flemish Research Foundation for my personal funding. Thank you.